Welcome everybody, this is Global Leadership Day and I'm Julie Lindsay. Yes, I started the recording. Thank you to our sponsors and supporters of the Global Leadership Week and of course the global education work that Lucy Gray and Steve Hargadon do across the world. Uh, if you are able to grab the um, smiley face or star and put where you are in the world. I'm actually right over here on the east coast of Australia, about halfway up the east coast. I live in a place called Ocean Shores and currently the time is 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday morning. I don't know, you don't have tools. Do you have tools? Yeah. I don't know if I can give you tools, let's see. Board permission. There you go. I've just given you whiteboard permission. If you want to just quickly grab a, a star or something and put it where you are. I know Maria's in um, Argentina. It looks like Marsha's in the USA. And Maria at 6:30 p.m. So we're 12 hours apart. Great. Thanks so much. All right. Let's keep moving here. Uh, right. And the slides. Here we go. So my presentation today is from Pedagogy to Cosmogogy, Leadership for Online Global Collaboration. Uh, and that's me. Uh, I run an organisation called uh, Flat Connections and you'll find, that, uh, you'll find my information on my blog and on the website there. If you're going to tweet out today, here are some of the handles uh, and hashtags that you may like to use. Global Ed 16, of course, is the hashtag for this particular uh, event and the, the other ones that I use there as well. The ideas and information that uh, I'm sharing with you today have largely come from this, the new book that I've written called The Global Educator. Uh, it is available now if you're in Australia and New Zealand on this side of the world. world. You can actually order it and receive it now. Uh, it is coming, of course, it's, it is being published by ISTE. Uh, and it's available in a couple of weeks through ISTE. The e-book is coming in June. So this book has contributions from over 130 educators and has 36 case studies. So I'm talking particularly about the second section of the book on global education leadership. Welcome, Barbara. Thanks so much for joining us. We've started and we're, we're launched. So my question today is, you know, what global education leadership skills and habits are needed to support and influence digitally fluent globally competent and collaborative lifelong learners. So in this very short time that we have today, I'm going to address that particular uh, question. And I want to start with uh, this whole idea of global perspective. Now, I've just returned from a two-week trip in China. Some of these images that I've thrown into the presentation today, which I finalised uh, two hours ago, uh, are from China. And we visited local and international schools and had a wonderful time learning a lot more about education in China. So this is a classroom in a local school up uh, around the Dalian area of China. So in terms of global perspective, a global education leader needs to advocate for global understanding and use tools to forge connections between learners. Uh, in terms of global perspective and global leadership, uh, a global education leader needs uh, to to be interactive so that we can work collaboratively. This is a picture of a school in uh, Qingdao on the east coast of China. Um, this is where we were using VoiceThread. We were showing students in an international school here how students in Australia are using VoiceThreads to connect with the world. And global leadership is not, not all, just about interaction. Uh, that leads to collaboration, but it's about curriculum redesign to bring the world in. So, you know, redesigning your curriculum so that you are able to interact with other classrooms around the world and embed that into the pretty much everyday learning in the classroom. Now, I want to talk about some of the terms. There are quite a few terms in this uh, presentation that I'm going to go through and explain. So, one of these is teacherpreneur. Uh, you may be familiar with this term. Some people say edupreneur. I know there's been a lot written about edupreneur as well. I tend to like the word teacherpreneur because it, it symbolises or applies to a person in an educational institution, perhaps in a classroom. Of course, I use the word classroom to mean uh, 
virtual or the real. So a teacherpreneur is a leader who takes all the best practices in education and latest, ad latest advances in technology and uses them to blaze new trails in teaching and learning that focus on connection and collaboration. Welcome Renee for joining us, it's great to see you here. So in terms of teacherpreneurial leadership, this is about you know, getting an idea, uh, fostering excitement amongst other teachers, and that may be within your local community, it may be in a global community, using different forms of communication, and actually bringing together a group of teachers to do something significant. So this is teacherpreneurial leadership in a global context. And I'm sure if you're in this room now, you are already, I would say most likely, a global teacherpreneur because you've already uh, joined this wonderful conference and want to learn more. So in terms of uh, a teacherpreneur, some of the attributes, I mean a teacherpreneur is a champion for change, a realiser of the vision. Uh, a teacherpreneur uses new methods of publication and sharing information. A uh, teacherpreneur builds and facilitates community. A teacherpreneur is a researcher. A teacherpreneur um, is a pedagogical ex expert and promotes pedagogical excellence. A teacherpreneur innovates from within. Uh, a teacherpreneur works within and beyond the school culture. And a teacherpreneur manages, um, directs, mentors, and guides. So all of those uh, descriptions apply to this, uh, this whole idea of a teacherpreneur. Another word I want to bring to your attention is the word outlier. And I quite like this word as well. Now, Soraya Atiega produced her PhD in 2012 where she studied outlier teachers and this is her definition. An outlier teacher is a K-12 educator who's self-directed to create and develop uh, an innovative pedagogy using emerged or emerging digital social media through collaborative and global open networking. So I like that definition of outlier. So maybe you consider yourself an outlier rather than a teacherpreneur, but uh, both terms apply to, the, to what I'm talking about. Now I want to talk, talk to you also about another term that I use, and there is a history to this term as well, which starts with uh, Dr. Curtis Bonk over there in the USA. And my definition for learning concierge is an educator who supports knowledge construction in a non-hierarchical approach to learning globally. Now let me give you uh, an example of what I mean. I run a project called Connect with China Collaborative and you can see the, uh, the URL there on that screen. And these are some of the learning concierges in this project or, or collaborative. Now you can see we've got some different nationalities there, we have all different national origins, we have different ages there as well. Now some of these people on this screen are actually teachers in the collaborative. They've said, right, I want to bring my class, my grade 10, my grade 7, my grade 8, etc., into the collaborative and learn uh, about, you know, learn with China and about China, etc. Uh, some of them are actually, one boy there is actually a student who lived in China for about eight years. He's back in Australia now, but he was a learning concierge living in China, sharing uh, what life was like in China. Thanks Marie, yes, Anne Merchant is there of course as a learning concierge, she brought students into the collaborative. Uh, we also have non-government organisation representatives there, uh, people who work for uh, non-government organisations in China who also help with the learning. So the whole idea of this collaborative of course is that the learning is very flat, it's not just about teachers and students and teachers sharing information with students and then students connecting globally, which is what a lot of global projects do. This is actually a collaborative that is so flat that we involve different ages, uh, cross-age, so cross-purpose, uh, community groups, uh, teachers in, from different countries, teachers who are not even involved with students in the collaborative but want to be part of it and learn and share at the same time. Uh, a shout out to Ad Murchison and her session coming up in 45 minutes as well. Thank you. Yes, don't miss that one. So, digital technologies, the global education leader knows that digital technologies are part of the solution to meeting the needs of today's learners, support individual sharing of the vision, uh, empower learners through alternative and virtual networks, and promote transparency and accessibility. So I just wanted to put in that word about digital technologies, how important they are that we do understand them and use them 
and use different technologies for different reasons. So in terms of leadership to support flat learning, a flat connected learning environment has less hierarchy of command, is more agile in approach, and encourages every educator to be looking out for critical information to support learning. So flat learning is a new paradigm for educational leadership and is emerging to support place-based learning, connectivism and global outreach. Now, I see this as, as having two directions. So you've got your learning fluency while digital and of course there's the ability for community action while you're learning in a flat context. So we can look at social change and new leadership modes to support this. Uh, leadership for global learning. This is an image of a, a school I was in last Friday actually in Beijing. This is the uh, Western Academy Beijing, uh, a teacher there who is actually Skyping with Australia, walking around the high school building while she's on a Skype call with Australia and, and students who are from many different nationalities. This is, um, may have been actually a Chinese, well I think they're just in a Chinese speaking class. I'm not quite sure if that boy is Chinese, I think he looks Chinese. Uh, but they were talking to Australia and sharing what it was like to learn in an international school and to live, live in China. So a global education leader knows how to build virtual and real learning communities and then knows also how to blend the virtual with the real, which is, I think this picture is a good example of that. So a global education leader encourages customization of learning experiences to local standards while being, in flex, while being flexible, so to embrace connection. Um, a global education leader embraces innovation and pedagogical excellence, as I've said before, uh, this whole idea of an agile cu curriculum. Creates opportunities from perceived difficulties. Now, and I, I use China as a really good example here because China is a perceived difficulty. China is more difficult to connect with given that many tools are blocked in China. But as I always say in my next sentence after that, many tools are also blocked in Western countries such as uh, North America and Australia so for different reasons uh, and that is also one of our challenges as global educators. But, you know, a global education leader works with, within that and is able to build a culture of success uh, through building communities and using uh, different, a basket full of tools. Uh, now I'll talk about this leading to pedagogical change and this is actually part of my, my doctorate work at the moment. I'm about halfway through my educational doctorate with the University of Southern Queensland and uh, my working title at the, at the moment is Online Global Collaborative Educators in Pedagogical Change. So I'm in the process of collecting data and interviewing many global educators across the world and how they are approaching uh, online global collaboration in the classroom. And uh, what I'm saying here is leaders must demonstrate and model collaborative practices to support uh, this pedagogical change. So they need to have knowledge of appropriate teaching methods and awareness of learner experiences while using Web 2.0 tools. Uh, they must understand changing partnerships and that th understand that changing partnerships and technology supports collaboration and creation of new knowledge. And to be able to lead to pedagogical change, we must focus on the process of learning in particular. So what I'm talking about here, um, you know, when working globally, I feel there is a missing piece to the learning pie. Now, some of these words you may be familiar with. Uh, pedagogy, of course, is, means to lead the child, instructional learning. Andragogy is to lead the man or adult, uh, which means self-directed learning. Uh, which I believe applies not only to adults but to uh, K to 12 as well, particularly the middle school, high school level. Uh, Hortagogy has been applied to uh, adult education and this recognises the need to be flexible in the learning where the teacher provides the resources. Uh, I also believe that Hortagogy applies to uh, beyond, uh, you know, uh, high school and school children as well. Uh, another concept that supports knowledge building amongst learners in a community of practice is that of pedagogy, and this comes from the work of Connelly and Danoff on, on paragogy, which is a theory of peer learning using online environments. 
and inspired this inspired Howard Rheingold to start the Peeragogy project. So Peeragogy is an open learning environment and a new way of seeing and collaborating and learning. It's often unstructured in practice and learning is collaborative, not just cooperative. But I'm also now suggesting a new agogy uh, that I'm calling cosmogogy, coming from the word cosmo, which means of or relating to the universe. So cosmogogy, as I've got it there, is the method and practice of learning while connected to the world using digital technologies whereby the context of learning is with rather than about. So it's not about location, sorry, it's not location based, it considers whom you learn with and what you construct together most important. Now I'm, I talk a lot more about this in the, the new book, The Global Educator. So I talk about, you know, how do we move from pedagogy to cosmogogy and this is where uh, cosmogogical leadership pertains to understanding how to foster and support approaches to learning while connected to others in any part of the world. So it's about how to support individualised and personalised learning that is less teacher and school directed, more self-determined as with pedagogy and aligned with developing a culture of, sorry, culture of collaboration as with pedagogy with a focus on student learner autonomy. I know that I'm saying a lot of words here. Uh, but it's basically a new approach, a new way of, of looking at design within the learning landscape. Uh, and I'm going to use the word flat again, that flattens the learning. There is no hierarchy. But once again, it's learning with rather than about. Uh, just looking through the last few slides here, where it's a very short presentation. Um, so when you start to look at you know, learning with rather than about, you need to look at tools, you need to look at um, uh, how, you got, how this, the approach um, uh, take, you know, your learning design and learning approach. Going back to that uh, Connect with China collaborative once again um, and, the, and the trip we've just done, China Connects was a ha hashtag for that trip. We did 11 schools in nine days. So this is a local school uh, in Dalian actually, up in the northern, northeast area of China. Uh, we use WeChat, the tool WeChat, which is a social media tool used extensively by millions and millions of Chinese, very accessible outside of China, and this is a tool that actually allows you to connect uh, with China. So that's one of those, you know, as a global leader, knowing the tools, knowing how to connect with, then starts to build those understandings uh, and abilities to learn with as well. Um, while we we're travelling through China, uh, we connected China with the world, we connected China to Australia, for example, we have Australia, New Zealand, Canada, USA in our collaborative at the moment. This is while we were on one of the fast trains, uh, zooming around China somewhere in the last couple of weeks, uh, using a selfie stick and an iPhone, can you believe, and using 4G connection uh, on the, using a Chinese SIM card, 4G connection. We uh, Skyped with a school in Adelaide, uh, talked to local people on the train, and uh, talk to a Chinese client in Adelaide, you can see, see the different pictures showing that. So, you know, in terms of leadership, understanding that these uh, types of situations are possible, uh, working towards um, creating these situ situations, uh, the students in Adelaide were, were extremely excited not to uh, just be able to talk with local people, to, to, to be able to, they were, it was like they were on the train with us, they could hear the, the train announcements in Chinese and English. No, there was no Wi-Fi on the train. No, I actually had a, four, uh, a SIM card in my phone, in my iPhone, and we had 4G. We had 4G connection all the way through China. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, just another uh, slide here, just to share. Uh, you can see this is still in, very much in my mind, and I wanted to bring this into this presentation as well, in terms of the uh, what I would call now cosmological approaches, leadership for connecting others with the world and uh, you know we, the our whole idea is that we're helping youth to break down stereotypes and this is a, a large focus of, a, of an education leader. You know, if you're going to join students to other parts of the world, it's not just to share what you do but it's to understand what others are doing and then to join together in some way to create something together and this is what we do with the Connect with China Collaborative etc. And this is just images of what we've found around China, uh, some local school images there, that one in the top right hand corner, a new local school up there in Anshan, 
which is just uh, north of Delhi, and uh, wonderful facilities. We uh, the school inside the school has, has wonderful creative learning spaces, etc., uh, and um, teachers that are pushing boundaries. And of course, an international school. And this at my life. This is a little image we created to show how important it is to understand the air pollution. Students will have apps on their phones uh, that tell them what the air quality is each day and whether they're allowed to go outside or not. So that's you know, at my life is the term used there. To, you know, can we go out and play, or do we have to stay inside because of the the many high pollution levels across China? All right. So um, I've done this pretty quickly so that we have. Is there any questions, etc., and to allow you to jump to your next uh, session in this wonderful conference? But just some takeaways in terms of um, global education leadership here. So, be to become a global education leader, you need to be a networked learner. You need to use tools that network you, such as Twitter, such as WeChat. I'm really pushing WeChat because it is just an amazing tool that we can all use. It allows us to use groups, it allows individual communication, it allows uh, sharing of images and videos, uh, it allows um, Skype-like calls, etc. Um, and in a flat learning environment, it's, it's who you know, not what you know. So it's really about and sharing this, this concept with the students as well. It's not, it's not about content anymore. Uh, it's not about learning about content. It's who you know and what you can learn from them. And that, that's a whole other presentation in itself, of course. But just keep that in mind. And another takeaway, uh, you need to lead the way for new pedagogical approaches to online collaborative learning. So don't be confined by existing pedagogies. You know, look at what I have to say about cosmogogy. It's a funny word, I know. I've, I've coined it to, to um, so that people can say, gee, that's an odd word. What's she talking about? Uh, but have a look at it. You know, what does that mean? How can we learn with? And what, does, what, is, what leads up to the point where we are learning with others in the world? And takeaway number three, I encourage you to go beyond the wow. Uh, and when I say that, I immediately think of real-time Skype calls, mystery Skypes. And of course, you know that Skype call I shared with you from the fast train in China. Yes, that is the wow. That, that's engaging, that it generates excitement. But we need to go beyond that. We have the technology. We have other pedagogies as well. It's time to connect the world to meaningful co-creations, not just, not just those wow moments. Use those, but go beyond them as well. So just a plug, uh, Flat Connections is where you'll find all of my, my other global projects. The China Collaborative is, is there as well. And what I do is learning about the world with the world through Flat Connections, teacher professional learning, global projects, live events, etc. So take a look. Um, I've just launched my new website, which is pretty much ready for the world. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's pretty much there. And that's where you will uh, connect with me. That's, uh, that's my information there. What was the next one? Oh, stop recording, etc. So thank you so much for, for being here with me and sharing um, my presentation, which is uh, from pedagogy to cosmogogy and the leadership that is needed to do that. Any questions at this point? Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop the. Uh, oh, Maria, what advice could you give to a global beginner teacher? Uh, I think going back to that takeaway number one, get yourself connected. And the, the professional learning that I run, I run a, a three-month course. I also run ten, uh, sorry, four-week courses, like beginner courses uh, for connected learning. You've got to get yourself connected. You've got to come to conferences like this. You've got to follow Twitter hashtags. You've got to be putting things out there. Sometimes you need to lurk at first, but you need to be a contributor and you need to get yourself out there and start the journey of becoming comfortable with social media for connection. Uh, and that's where you begin. And then you start to find like-minded teachers and think about design, learning design, 
that will embed global collaborative learning into the classroom. That's the beginning of the pathway. Thanks, everyone. Okay, I'll let you jump to the next uh, session. Bye for now.